again, uh, beginning in verse 17. Thank you for taking time out to come this morning and be a part of our services. We just pray that you will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, if we ever needed the Lord before, the song says we need him now. And so it might be a good idea to uh, seek him while he may be found. Jesus, in, in Luke chapter 10, and in, another, there's, in other gospels, he, he is uh, commissioning his disciples to send them out, and he's giving them all kind of powers to do the work, or giving them power to do all the things that he's sending them out to do. Of course, we all know, and if you know anything about Christian service, you, only, you know that if it's only what you can do, it won't amount to much. But if it's what God can do, it will amount to a lot. And, and that's not what we're going to preach about this morning, but I, I just wanted you to get some kind of a context there of where, where we're headed because there's a verse uh, there in verse 20 that we really want to talk about today, but it takes all this other stuff to get there because uh, it's all tied together. And so if you pull this string, if this string down here is pulled too because everything, the Bible said it's, it's all joined together. You can't separate it. And you can't pull it apart. So we're going to try to maintain its text and go from there. In verse 17, it says, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. And today, that's what I want us to talk about, verse 20. Rejoicing because our names are written in heaven. Now, I can understand, uh, you know, how these fellows must have felt. When they went out into these neighborhoods and into these communities, and they went out and they began to uh, preach and do what Jesus had commissioned them to do, I can imagine the joy they must have felt to realize the power which they had on their lives that they could go and do these kind of things. I can understand how their focus would perhaps be on the things that were happening uh, because of the power of God on their life. But Jesus said that's not the important thing that we need to rejoice about. And in Psalms 139, the Bible talks about our members being recorded in heaven before uh, we were born or while he is forming us in our mother's womb. And so I, that is the blessed assurance to me that God never intended that any one of us would perish. It's God's will that none perish. So in all, and God demonstrated that will when in Psalms 139, it said he, he recorded our members in the books. And then in Revelation, if you go to Revelation and read in Revelation, he said to one of the churches, I will not blot out your members. I will not blot out your name if you continue to serve. Now, I want to tell you something. Uh, it's going to be a, a sad time for God to blot names out of the book that his intention were that they might be saved. That his intention was that, that they would not they fail, they would not uh, uh, get a lure and an attraction to the things that are happening, but they would rejoice rather over the opportunity uh, that they may serve the God of heaven and their names re be in the book of life and rejoice over the fact that when it's finished here, it's just begun there, amen? And that should be the joy of the church today. I'm telling you right now, that should be the joy of every church. It should be the joy of the church that we have been made free to serve a, a God that has set us free indeed. It should be the joy of the church that we got up out of bed this morning. Amen. I, I, I'm just telling y'all, I, I just, as I was thinking, sitting here this morning, just thinking about all the good and wonderful things which, which God does, it's amazing to me uh, that he even led us up out of bed as, as, as weary and careless as we have been to him. 
It's amazing to me that he doesn't exercise his authority and exercise his power uh, to sometimes just strike us down where we are because he's weary with us in the way we live our life. He has made provision and he has made a way and, and he, he said I have made a way. It's a straight way and it's a narrow way. He said, but there are few people who want to go therein. And there's a few people who go in there. That's what he said. But he said there's a broad way in the way of the world and men love that way more than anything else. And many there be who go and walk in that way. Maybe this morning you're one of those who walking in that way. Listen to me, I got something to share with you this morning. Several years ago, right here on this property, uh, we, I don't remember what, we had a summer fest or whatever we called it, but we went, Richard went and borrowed some pigs. Y'all remember we borrowed the pigs and, and we were going to have a greased pig. Rest, the children were going to wrestle with the greased pig. And I know some of y'all in your lifetime have had the experience of going to a carnivore or state fair and they'd have a, a wrestling. Ever who caught the pig would get a prize because a greased pig is hard to catch. Well, Richard, we had put all that stuff out there and, and around the bottom of the pen we had, we had it so that the pigs couldn't go through the fence and we were going to put the children in the fence. And while we, we were explaining, while Richard was explaining all that, we had children, I'm telling you, they were children all around that place there and there was a lot of excitement in the air and, and everybody was trying to listen. And, and while he was giving instructions, that little pig got down there uh, around his feet and snuck out the front door and every young and out there took off after that pig. And I can remember the fence was right there. See, they, for, they heard the instructions, but they didn't hear them. And they, that pig, guess where he went? Straight toward the road. He went straight out there. And, and every youngin' in our church at that time went running to the road and every visitor. And I'm standing back there. How many is going to be killed? Oh, God, please. And I'm, everybody's yelling, stop. Stop, don't run after that pig. But the instructions were to run after the pig. I'm telling y'all something. That was an excitable day. And excitable. Well, you know what the pig did? He just kept on running. He took over. He turned away from the road. He ran down beside that house. He ran in the woods back there and hid himself. And, uh, you know, what I want you to see, though, is those children going after that pig. What I want you to understand is the reason the church today is chasing pigs is because they didn't listen to the instructions. Because they didn't listen to the instructions until God got through teaching them before they started running after the things. And I'll tell you, that's why people are more allured to the things than they are allured to the fact that their name is recorded in heaven. That's why people are more excited about these temporary things than they are about the things that are yet to come. I won't ever forget that day. That's a high spot in my ministry. It might even show up here on homecoming uh, uh, in a couple of weeks and in a photograph somewhere. But I thought that was a unique thing and the Lord just uh, shared that with me a while ago when I was sitting here uh, to use that to illustrate what's going on here with these guys. And you'll find that these guys, uh, his disciples, he, they were 70 of them here but there were 12 in the inner circle and he commissioned all 70 of these people and he sent them out there and, and they did. It, he came back but they always had trouble. They always had trouble doing what the Lord said they ought to do. And if you'll follow it up, you'll find it yourself if you'll read about their lives. For three years with Jesus, they had a tough time following him. In fact, uh, we read, there's another scripture that says that every one of them left him, but 12. He had 70 here that went out there, had power over devils. I want y'all to know, you, if God gives you power to go do something, hey, you may come back a lost man and you may leave him. You may have gone out there and done some great and wonderful testimony and done some great and wonderful things, but you left him. You left him like a, a 68 or 58 are going to leave him. They're going to leave him because they said, this is a hard saying, who can do it? 
I'm telling you something. Weeping, you're going to weep some. You're going to hurt some. You're going you're gonna to fail sometime. You're going you're gonna to get discouraged. You're going to get disappointed. You're going to think about going somewhere else. You're going to think about not going anywhere. You're going to think about giving up. You're going to think about what people are doing or saying about you. You may think many things, but I'm telling you something. There ain't no place to stop and give up. My name is written in heaven. My name is written in heaven. And Jesus said, I ought to rejoice because of that. Uh, he, he tells us, don't fear the one who can kill you, but fear the one who can take your soul away. Fear the one who can, who can give you life eternal. That's the one we need to be in contact with this morning. But I want you to know there are many that have grown weary in well-doing. There are many that have left and chased the pig. That's just a fact of it. Because anytime you're not walking with the Lord, you're chasing a pig. And that's the truth of it. I, I heard a, a, a young man say, in fact, he's an actor. If I were to call his name, you'd know he's a comedian. But he, he was talking to an interviewer. Uh, he had written a book about Harvey. Y'all know Harvey, right? He's got a game show called Family Feud. But uh, he, he was talking to this woman. He says, I consider a person who doesn't believe in God an idiot. And, and of course that offended her. He said, now that's where I'm at. He said, if you don't believe in God, you got no moral place, you got no place to base your morality. You, you got no morals at all. If you, don't, if you don't believe in God, you're just an idiot. He said, now that's where I'm at. He said, that's what I believe. He said, and we ought not to marry somebody that don't believe in God. He said, we ought not to date somebody that don't believe in God because they are morally bankrupt if they don't believe in God. If, if they're not aware of the fact that their name is written in heaven, uh, folks, I'm telling you, they're bankrupt. I don't know that I'd be so blatant as he would, but he, he would not back down. This woman kept telling him, hey, that's strong. He says, well, it's the truth. And he's got a big influence across the country. He's got a big influence across America. Uh, but he, he wrote in a book and put it in a book. That's what he believes. If you don't believe in God, you're an idiot. And you know, based on everything, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you look up in the book and, it, and find out what idiot means, that makes a lot of sense. And that, that tells me a lot of things. The country that leaves God, America is on her way away from God, and we've got more idiots in America than we've ever had. we got more people who don't have a moral base, and therefore they are immoral. They are doing immoral things regularly and calling it right. They, 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 they're trying to tear down the laws that, that have been built up into our system. One of the favorite words they use is white supremacy and things like that. Uh, they just tear, they tear somebody down all the time. Anybody that voted for Donald Trump's an idiot, and y'all know that's not true. And, hey, but look here, that's what we're being accused of because people don't like him. That, that's where we are. It's like saying anybody that's not a Baptist is lost. It's like anybody that's a Catholic is going to hell making statements like that. It's the same principle, but we don't have no moral base. We don't have no moral base because we threw God to this roadside and we do what we want to do. We threw God uh, out of the bed with us and forgot that our name is written in heaven and forgot the fact that our rejoicing ought to be together with the saints of God. Amen. How many of you got families, children? When your children are hungry, you have to beg them to the table. No, you don't. Mom, where's supper or dinner? I'm starving. When are we going to eat something around here? Boy, I would to God the people of God would get hungry for God and would cry out for more like we ought to be. Would cry out for more time and cry, look here. I can remember in Tabor City when you couldn't buy a, a gallon of gas on Sunday. I remember when you couldn't, you couldn't go to a restaurant and eat because they weren't open. 
But I'm going to tell you something. We gave them a little crack and said, okay, we'll open up one restaurant. We'll open up one gas station. Now all the gas stations are open. The North state of North Carolina just changed the time on Sunday morning now that you can buy whiskey and changed the time on Sunday that you can go hunting. The whole thing has been thrown out the door. All hell is broke loose. And the people of God are running after the things instead of realizing their names written in heaven. You see, here's the way we did it. There's nothing wrong with eating on Sunday. Well, there's something wrong with it when you says remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. See, see when, you, when you shine the light on, on things of this world under the word of God, that's what makes it unholy, folks. It ain't, it ain't that these are bad people that are opening up a restaurant because they want to live for the devil and, and they running here. And that ain't what this says. What that simply means is, is, is the choices of people. Let me tell you something. You know that Sunday is consumed by everything but worship. You know that it's consumed by, uh, and, and I'm very disappointed in Mr. Brendan Jones for voting for this mess, and I'm not going to vote for him. That's what I'll tell you right up front. Go tell him that, and I'm planning on telling him that myself for this Sunday stuff that he's voted for in the Congress of the state of North Carolina. I never intend to vote for him again. Period. Now you go vote for who you want to. Christian people don't pass laws to hunt on Sunday. Christian people don't pass laws to make drinking more available on Sunday. Christian people just don't do things like that. And I don't care if you're a president, senator, or who you are, you're still a Christian and your name is written in the book of life. And don't bleak that part out of my tape. It's walled up there. Leave it in there. They try to monitor me because I get carried away sometimes. But leave that part in. Because that's, that's the way I feel. And so, you see, Jesus is saying to these guys, hey, fellas, I appreciate your, your, your joy, but Jesus knew that down the road their joy weren't going to be that full. Jesus knew that down the road that when he, he, when he looked at them as they were leaving, he, he turned to the twelve, one was a devil, and said, are you going to leave too? In fact, at the cross, there was one standing over there. His name was John with the mother of Jesus. He named nobody else that was over there because they all left him and he knew it. He knew if they were earth focused and earth based and if all they could rejoice is about the fact that they could cast out a devil or pray over somebody, they'd be healed. If he could just get all that, hey, Jesus knew that when the time come. But the time came, I want to tell you all, the time came for 11 of them. Every one of them but one died a martyr for Jesus Christ. I just hope y'all grow up and become a martyr in your Christian service at New Horizon Baptist Worship Center for Jesus Christ. Get over yourselves. Get over fulfilling what your desires are and begin to fulfill the desires of the Lord Jesus Christ at any cost. Be willing to sacrifice even unto being crucified upside down for the calling of Jesus Christ on your life. Be willing to, to, to make uh, the contribution of your life to Jesus Christ so in the fullness of recognizing that your name is written in heaven. You see, churches, don't we don't like that kind of preaching, do we? No, we don't. We don't like nobody to tell us what we ought got to be doing. That was the problem then. It's a problem now. And it's not me trying to tell you it's written in the Word of God. It's what's demanded of us and what's required of us is written right here in this precious book. But somehow or another, we like they, we ran, when the pig ran, we ran, and we're still chasing the pig. Well, can I tell you what happened to the pig? He ran over there and ran in the woods, and, and we lost him. You know what Richard was worried about? Richard's the one that borrowed him. He was worried. The man said, now, you be careful. Take care of my pigs. He had two of them, and he was worried about the man being upset, and we were going to have to pay for the pig. We had two pigs. Y'all remember that? You know what we did? We took the other pig down there side of the road and set him out there in the thing, and the pig in the woods came to the pig side of the road. That was a real lesson in that church. You take the good pig and set him out there side of the road, and the other pig going to come to him. Y'all listening? 
and we got the pig. It, we had to wait a while. The church had already was over the activities and everything had happened. But the pig came to the other pig. I see, I, I just want to tell you all something. But did you know a light draws people that are in darkness? The Bible says we are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill which cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick where it giveth light unto all. We took out there and put a light out there that would draw the pig in darkness. Guys, I'm not calling human beings pigs. I just thought that was a good little illustration. I just thought that we could learn something by it. Because you, you, we absolutely know, even young people, the young people in our church right here is searching for something. They are looking for something that they have not found in me or in you. They are looking for something in their life. I mean, they, they have seen their heroes in, on television, their heroes in sports. They, they have seen, and, and they've heard what they're doing, what they're saying. They, they've seen how they dress. They've seen how they act. They've seen how their lives are. They're confused. But when you've got a confused church with a confused citizenry, what you're going to do? We, somebody's got to have a made-up mind. Uh, somebody, these kids, uh, not just kids, young men and women, old men and women will come if we get over our confusion. We're confused about it. We got half the instructions and started running instead of waiting for all of it so that we can complete what we've been set to do. What did Paul say? Paul said, he didn't say I got weary, I got tired. He didn't, he didn't say uh, that I just laid it down, I couldn't do it no more. He said, I have kept the faith. I have run the race. I have finished what God given me to do and I'm ready to be taken. I'm ready to go home because, hey, I don't have to hold back anything. We know that Simon Peter's in heaven. We know that James and John, the sons of Zebedee's in heaven. We know that Matthew, we know that Thomas, we know that Didymus, hey, called Tom. We know that they're in heaven, praise God. Their names were written in heaven. And they decided to follow Jesus in the upper room. They decided to, to, for their commitment that it was going to be uh, for the whole ball of wax. They were put in prison. They were beaten. And, and their heads were cut off chain. Hey, they were crucified upside down. They, they, everything that could happen did happen, but yet they trusted because their names were written in the book. They knew it was. Stephen, a deacon like Stephen, would to God, every church had deacons like Stephen. Stone, he lifted up his eyes and the Bible said he saw Jesus standing and said, Father, forgive him. Father, forgive him as he was dying. I get upset. I get discouraged. I'm more, if there's one word in my life that describes me more, it's disappointed. I'm disappointed in people because I put my trust in people more than I ought to. I'm always saying they're going to do better tomorrow, but tomorrow always brings me disappointment. But I'm going to keep on trusting that God is going to turn some people's lives around. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to turn back. I'm going to keep on believing and trusting in my Lord that when I call in the morning when I get up for a day with my Bible in my hand and I'm reading and I'm praying, I'm going to trust God one day it's going to be like a gusher. It's going to turn around. I'm going to see lives rededicated and renewed. I'm going to see backsliders come uh, back to the very place uh, where they began and start over. I, I remember the words in my own ears of some of your commitments. You said it to me over and again when you started. I want to know what happened to you. I want to know what happened along the way that made you so coarse and so unde undedicated anymore that you'll turn on anything and go anywhere but here. I want to know uh, what devil it was that drug you away from the altar of the Lord God himself. Uh, you may say, he didn't drag me away. I'm just doing this. No, you've been drug away. You were supposed to be in the pen. Instead, you snuck out the door. You were supposed to be the focal point, but you ran out the door at the first opportunity. 
you turned away and began to run from challenge and call of God. You don't have time for that. You've come to a point in your life you deserve. No, you don't. You deserve death, just like me. We don't deserve anything. We can't demand anything. All we can do is give thanks and praise unto the Lord for what he's done for us. But by his grace, we would all perish today. But because of his love and because of his mercy, we were able to come today. Never thought, but I'd see today when you make a contact with people, they're offended because you inquired as to where they've been. Never thought that that there would come a time when people would be offended when you checked on their well-being. But they are. It ain't none of your business. We live in such a day. We got a public church, which is international, that are called up and casting out devils, healing It's, a pub, it's the public church of our day has stripped the decency of the private church away. These dudes running around out here in their blue jeans and their shirt tails out calling themselves preachers. And they got the answer to everything that just happened. And it's, it's international. They're everywhere. I want you to know the Lord warned us about that and said, beware. They say, I'm over there and I'm over yonder. They, I'm not over there. And I'm not over yonder. The Lord warned us about this very day we're going through. I'm telling you. See, we went running for the pig before we listened to the instructions. Just because somebody names the name of Jesus don't mean they in the name of Jesus. That's the thing you got to remember. Because we don't know the motive of heart. And that's the thing. We don't know what, what God has done in that heart and what God has called that heart to do. But I'm going to tell you something. We could, this group of people right here could move the state of North Carolina with a commitment to their name being written in heaven. With a commitment that your name has been written in heaven. I'm telling you, your shout would be heard from one end to the other. I'm telling you, your song would be heard all over this nation if you just commit yourself to the fact that your name is recorded. That God gave Jesus a name above every name. If you were here lately, you've heard that message. But hey, let me tell you something. The Bible said he's going to give us, as we talked Wednesday night, he's going to give us a new name. We're going to get a new name. And, and beside my members in that book, in heaven, he's got my new name written. And when I get to where he is, Brother Buck, he's going to reveal what my new name is. I want you to know something. And he's also going to send the choral director over there and tell me what the new song I'm going to sing is. Amen. He's going to tell me all that stuff. But look here. I'm not worried about those streets of gold that are clear like glass. I'm not worried about the gates that are uh, one pearl and those gates are so big. I'm not worried about the precious stones that make the wall. A diamond as big as your fist hanging on a wall there. I'm not worried about all that. Hey, I just want to see the one who's sitting on the throne. I want to see him face to face. Glory be to God. And he made it possible. He wrote my name and my name is recorded in heaven. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord forevermore. I'm so thankful. Jesus said, for that reason, rather you ought to rejoice because your name is written in heaven. I'm thankful for that. There are you. Sherry, I believe that at the top of that page that she was singing from, it had Thomas Ward on it. Sinner saved by grace. That's all, I, that's all I've ever been. I thought I was something one time, but uh, God, when I got back up, 
I realized what a nothing I was. Never been nothing. But in Jesus Christ, I'm his son. Because the Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. I am God's son. Justin, you hear me? I am God's son. Chassie, you hear me? I might be your papa and your favorite, but I tell you, I'm God's son first. Tell Nanny who your favorite is. Amen. Let me tell you. She won't tell nobody. She, she won't do it. That's why I pick at her. But my name's written. Look, I was thinking the other day, sometimes people think about stuff like this and they, it turns people off. I don't tell you what I was thinking. I see, I see children with birth defects. And you know what I read in Psalms where it says, and my God formed you with his hand. And I said to myself, and I asked this on Wednesday night, and we got to reconcile this. If God formed us, why would he form us with disease? Well, you know that question was asked of Jesus. Did y'all know that? And you know what Jesus said? Was, that man said, was it because his mother sinned or because his father sinned? Jesus said, be neither one. It's because they could bring glory to God. So that they could bring glory to God. I'm going to tell you something. We're more pathetic than a child born with birth defects. When we walk around crippled and maimed spiritually, we are, I'm telling y'all something, we better quit gazing at the wrong thing. We better start looking at our heart and determine whether or not we are crippled. We are crippled in our faith and we're the gazing stock of the whole world because we don't even know we're crippled, but we are and God's looking on us and the world's looking on us and we need to do something about it before it's everlasting too late. Amen. You know what Paul said? Paul had a, a, a defect in his health. He said, Lord, will you take it? And the Lord said, no. Lord, would you please take it? The Lord said, no. Lord, would you please, please take it? The Lord said, no. He said, in, my, in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. Hey, let me tell you. In your, in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. If I let that go, you would be high-minded. If I let that go, you would be think you were something that you're not. And I'm going to let you keep it so that it will keep you humble before me that I can use you to save my people. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad. I'm glad with every, all of our infirmities. I don't know why God wanted me. I don't know why God wanted others. I'm going to give you a real compact testimony here and we're going to have an invitation. Listen, God told me that if I would serve him, if I would give my life to him, that he would give me my family. He said, I will give you your family. If you men that are fathers here, you ought to listen up. Your ears ought to be standing straight up. If you'll give me your life, I'll give you your family. I'll let you see your family come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'll let you see it in your lifetime. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. That was one of the greatest promises you could have ever given me. It wasn't no time. but and just, In fact, me, Judy, and Tony were baptized together. It God already started. It, then I was pastoring over there on North End Baptist Church. Wasn't even ordained yet. Michelle gave her heart to Jesus. I, I had to get somebody ordained to baptize her. But let me tell you something. Next thing you know, here comes Shane. Next thing you know, here come my, starting my grandbabies start getting saved. Won't ever forget, I was at Iron Hill visiting one night and over there by myself and, and Landon called just a crying. He was just a little boy. He said, Papa, I want to be saved. Papa, could you show me how to be saved? Folks, I wouldn't take a trillion dollars for that. I said, boy, I'll be there just as quick. as I don't know what, I believe it was that Dodge truck. I like to burn the tires off from it. I said, I'll be there just as quick as I can get there. Yes, sir. Tell you something. 
you can't outlive that. That's the promises of God. Guys, let me tell you something. You may be doing, I'm so proud of you for your work you do, the celebration of work that goes on, and I thank you for it, but I hope you're doing it for the right cause. I hope you're not doing it because you're good at it and you, you think that your reward is in yourself, but I want you to know Jesus said, don't ever forget about the, where your name's written. Don't ever forget. And my purpose here this morning was, was to help you. Maybe you're here and you're lost. To help you be assured in your heart that your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I remember the, a singing group used to sing, He Wrote My Name, and they'd have all these parts. And each one would sing their part. He wrote my name. Way up, way up in glory land. Glory be to God. And they'd sing that thing before you got through, you'd be wanting to holler. He wrote my name. Songs are written about, he called my name. He calls and he talks. Said at supper time, that mama would step out and say, come home. Call out your name and say, okay, son. You'd be playing out there and it'd be about dark. Come home. It's supper time. I ain't far from that call. I know that. I know I'm not far from that call. That I'm, God's going to say, come home, son. It's supper time. Come home. I want you all to know that I have chased that pig before. But when I got the instructions, I quit chasing that pig. Because I know my name is written in heaven. Do you know that? Girls get her some of the other. They took my word, didn't they? Would y'all stand with me? Is there someone here this morning brokenhearted? Sin is eating away at you. Sherry said that a uh, sinner saved by grace. You've never, you've never experienced the love and the washing power of God to wash away your sin. You've never made that, that profession of faith. You want to, you've wanted to more than one time. But somehow or another, something has held you back. You, you just feel like this morning that you just need to give your heart to Jesus. If you're here and you feel that way, would you come? Just step out. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter where you're from. Just step out and step into the arms of Jesus Christ. Just step under the fountain filled with blood that flowed from Emmanuel's vein and be washed by the precious blood of the Lamb Jesus. Just step out. Be of good courage. Step out and in faith receive may be here this morning you've been banded every which way your heart's been tossed here tossed there you've been a, it's, it's like a piece of paper you've been passed from one hand to another hand you may feel like that you won't ever be no good we were at our prayer about time this morning we were talking about a young woman and that's exactly what I was thinking in my heart God she's been through so much she's such a young and she's been through so much I wonder what her self-worth is this morning. I wish I could have went to her and, and got a hold of her and asked her, honey, how do you feel? What do you think your self-worth is? God, help mercy on her. He knows, Lord knows who it is. Maybe you feel that way. Lord, help us. Help us this morning. Help us, Lord, we come here and we leave. Help us to never be the same after we leave here today. Help us. Help us to commit ourselves if that's what we need and mean it. Help us to go through that upper room this morning so that we, when we come down from there, our lives won't ever be the same. Help us to understand the full instructions that you were given. Oh, yeah, you're the one that said go and do these things. There's good things, and they, we can only do them because they come from you. Touch that heart that needs touching. Hold that person that needs holding comfort the broken hearted. Lord, we give
give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Let us sing. You come as you feel led. You can only do what you feel led. You do that. Let the Lord have his way. Come if you feel led. 